welcome to Sar Trail. I'm Jeff, and we are dispersed camping out on Padre Island in Texas. And for lunch today, we are going to make fried chicken on the Camp Chef Dutch oven. We're gonna do that on lump charcoal, but first, we're just standing on the beach here. We don't have a grill, we don't have any of that stuff, so we gotta make something to cook that in. So first thing we're gonna do is on this sand here, we picked an area that gives us a little bit of wind protection from our camp setup right here, from our overlander. And we are going to dig out a pit here to then drop those lump charcoal in. But first we gotta wet that sand because it's really dry up here. We don't want it blowing around. We don't want our, our oven that we're digging into the sand to collapse. So this is how it goes. Picked an area. I got water right there off the beach. We're gonna soak this in really good. Then I'm gonna let that soak in. I'm gonna bring in one more bucket here, and I'm gonna let that soak in for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna start digging. Okay, so we got our area soaked in good. Got an extra bucket of water in the event we need it, which I'm sure we will. But now we're gonna go ahead and start digging this in. Got this all dug out here, poured water on all the sides, splashed some water on it. Want the sides to stay really solid, don't want any cave-ins on us. And we can always come back around later and put water around the outside, even with the fire going. You just don't want to put in water on the inside, put your fire out. So, got some fatwood, heart of pine, fire starters, some kindling sticks that we picked up, and a little bit of newspaper that we brought out here with us. We're gonna get these guys down in here. And they're nice, safe, out of the wind. Lay some of this kindling across. And some of this heart of pine. And before we get that guy going, I'm gonna get some lump charcoal in there. So this is some lump charcoal that we picked up in Corpus Christi on our way out here to the beach. Looks like good stuff. We haven't used this brand before, but it looks really good. And the key right now is just to get it lit. Once it's lit, then we will add charcoal to it after. The key right now is just getting all of these guys lit. Okay, and once we get that heart of pine where it's really flaming up, it's gonna light that charcoal up really fast. So you can see right there, there's Heart of Pine getting lit. Once a couple of those guys get lit, this whole thing will get going and we'll be looking really good. And then we're gonna add some charcoal. Once that charcoal all gets lit, then we're gonna add some more charcoal. Then it's time to drop the Dutch oven in on there. Okay, so we are lit real nice in there now. And I'm gonna go ahead and add more lump charcoal, spread it all around there. And once all of the lump charcoal is lit, then we're ready to drop that Dutch oven in there. What we're going to do is put oil in the Dutch oven, preheat it, and once it gets up to temperature, then we'll start adding the chicken for our fried chicken. All right, so Natalie is here cutting up the chicken. And this is what she has so far, cutting it up into our sections. Yep, all done. Looking good, looking good, baby. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add coconut oil into our Dutch oven. It's really important that this get nice and hot before we start frying our chicken and we are just using coconut oil so probably going to end up using the majority of this jar okay 
Okay, so Natalie's getting the last remaining part of that coconut oil out of there. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna melt this down, see what the level comes to. I've got some more if we need it, but hopefully that'll be enough. Right. Okay, so next thing is, are we throwing the lid on? Uh, yeah, we can. Let's throw the lid on. The sand isn't blowing around too bad out here, and I've wet the whole area around us. We are in a wind break here with our 4x4 blocking us, but we want to make sure we had very little sand to our meal today. All right, so Natalie's going to lower that in, even though her back is hurting. All right, and we have a handle to pull that out of there, so we're not going to be grabbing it when it's really hot. So we're going to let that stay for a bit. Once it's super hot, then we're going to start adding chicken. Okay, so next up, I'm going to make up the batter for the chicken, and I'm going to pour in about a cup of milk and three eggs. And that'll be our wet part. And then I'm going to put in about two cups of flour with oregano, some thyme, uh, salt, and pepper. It's really important that you season that really, really well. Okay, so Natalie's seasoning that chicken now. And the salt right, and so you want to season the chicken and the flour. Otherwise, it won't, it won't taste very good. All right, awesome. So now I'm gonna put the flour in here, which you might have a lot of wind. Yeah, it's pretty windy, so the flour's gonna go around a little bit. This is einkorn flour. You can use whatever flour is of your choice. So now, again, I'm gonna add, so I salt and pepper this chicken really well. idea while Natalie's doing that I'm going to show you our campsite here where we're hanging out at this week so we are dispersed camping out on Padre Island in Texas it is kind of just outside Corpus Christi and it is a gorgeous spot and we got the beach all to ourselves for a mile couple miles in the south direction at least a long way in the north direction and we got this gorgeous beach feels like all to ourselves occasionally some people that come by with fishing poles they'll drive by run down the beach you can head way down south and there's a big fishing section down there there's a jetty a place for boats to come through but man this place is really isolated and really really gorgeous so there's our setup to give you a walk around and today is absolutely stunning look at that Let's walk out and see the breakers. So for us, coming to an amazing place like this, 
it just makes sense to make some awesome food and it's great family time and I just happened to marry an incredible cook she lets me run the charcoal and do the fire and come up with some ideas but when it really comes down to serious food prep it's all this young lady right here how's it coming baby good uh, they're looking good good yeah. good all right good. I'm gonna check the fire make sure it's all good maybe add a little bit of charcoal and then we're gonna be good to go okay we got some serious heat coming off of this guy I'm gonna pull this lid here I'd say that's ready for some chicken baby what do you think oh yeah well, let's check it. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's perfect, perfect. Take that lid off. It's a little bit too warm. All right, we're going to cool it down a little bit. We got a little too much heat coming there. It's because it's burning the flour pretty fast. Yeah. All right, unfortunately, I have nowhere to put this lid. Okay, so we got a tremendous amount of heat coming out of here. So I'm moving all of the lump charcoal to the side. It's really hot. I can't hold my hand there for very long. We get a longer stick. Okay, got a longer stick. Protect my hand a bit. We're moving all of this to the side because it was just too warm. Natalie dropped some of that flour in there and it started burning right away. So we know it's too hot for the chicken. So we got the chicken over there, the oil over here cooling down. And I'm gonna get this all off to the side and then we're gonna be able to control that heat a little bit more. You know, you just never know out in these conditions, you don't really have, you know, a, a controlled fryer that you just set the temperature at 375, 400, whatever you want. So we're kind of winging it, but that's kind of the fun part about doing this part. And there's always good ways to test it. So when this guy stops smoking somewhat, we're gonna drop him back in there and we'll have that temperature control. Okay, we got the chicken now, and we got all this oil down to the right level. So Natalie's gonna set those guys in there. And then we're gonna lower this down in to the fire pit. All right, so what are we looking for, Natalie, as far as temperature? Because we don't have a temperature gauge out here. We don't have a little fryer with us. Yeah, you know, you're looking for you sprinkle a little bit of flour in there and it kind of browns and it bubbles. But that, will, when we originally put it in there, it immediately burned. So you know it's way too hot. Gotcha. Perfect. All right, I'm going to lower this guy down on in. All right, so how are we looking, Natalie? Ready to flip them? Yeah, you can see they're starting to brown. Oh man, those look good. I'm gonna flip it over. Look how pretty sand on your lid there, baby. That man can't see. Okay, cool. Awesome, that was great. All right, let's see how this first batch looks. Plenty of chicken. Like that's good to go? Yeah. Awesome. All right, first four ready. I'm going to call Bailey over. Okay. And what's going on? Want to just eat them as they come off? I think so. 
Perfect, let's do it. All right, let me go track down Bailey, who's been out body surfing, and tell her we got fried chicken's ready, baby. Fried chicken's ready. Are you hungry? Yes. Yeah, I bet. You've been running around all day. Let's go eat. All right, I'm trying the first piece. That's really good, Natalie. That is really, really good. No temperature gauge, nothing. And look, look at this. It is moist. It's still pretty warm. It still just came off, but it's cooked really good. Super moist. You nailed it on this one, baby. All right, Bailey. Tell me how that drumstick is. Good? Hits the spot. It's really, really good. So a couple little tips. If you're gonna make it out at your campsite, you could always bring yourself like a candy thermometer and stick it on the side of the pot so you know what your temperature is. I've cooked enough chicken that I can kind of gauge it so I know how to fry chicken. But if you have never fried chicken before, bring a little thermometer. They don't take up very much space in your bag. I'd really recommend that, just so you know. And it's best if you can cook it around 375. If you don't have one, sprinkle it with the flour and the flour should just kind of sizzle and brown. If it turns black like it did at the beginning, you know it's way too hot. Just take it off the heat and let it cool down. Test it again and then you can see whether your temperature is good or not. Just don't throw it in oil that's too hot because you'll end up burning the outside and you will have completely raw chicken on the inside. And nobody wants that. So that's my tip for cooking it. You will come up with really great homemade fried chicken. Hey, thank you guys for checking out SAR Trail and our cooking of fried chicken out here on the beach. It's been a lot of fun for us. The cooking gear that we've used today, that Dutch oven, is going to be a link in the description box to Amazon where you can purchase one just like ours, just where we got it. And it is an awesome piece of cooking equipment to take with you when you're camping and overlanding. It's a little bit heavy, but man, the food that it produces is so, so worth it. Thanks a lot guys, if you have not yet, please subscribe to SAR Trail. You will get more overlanding gear, more overlanding content, more product reviews, and always, always, always family-friendly fun. Thanks guys.